I'm Carolyn Dix. I was born in 1939. Now tell me about your middle name. Well, I don't have one. <laughs> I'm the only one. I guess they ran out of middle names. I'm the only one. Well, Marguerite didn't have a middle name either. Uh, so basically, I just had Carolyn. And later on in life, I wound up using the W for Watson. Uh, seems like when you sign legal papers and things, well, they sort of want an initial for something. something so, but other than that, I was just Carolyn. <laughs> I have to stop and think. There were several of us at home. Uh, I guess uh, Vita and Patty had already left home. But as I remember, there was David and on down to Marguerite and Collier uh, that were there. So we had a house full. <laughs> I, well, I think that it, from David, Grace, Ruth, me, Marguerite and Collier, so, and Mom and Daddy, so there were probably at least, what, how many of those did I name? But there were seven or eight of us most of the time. She said, starting with you, they started having kids in the hospital. Uh, yeah, I think I was born in a hospital, uh, and then I was the first baby, I guess. Well, Ruth wasn't very old, but anyway. <laughs> she, yes, she was a toddler, though. Oh, we just played together. Uh, played, of course we uh, played dolls. I think every Christmas we could count on getting a new doll. That was probably our main gift from Santa Claus at Christmas time. And um, we would cut out paper dolls out of the Montgomery Wards catalog or the Sears Roebuck catalog. When it got old, when a new one would come out, well then we could take the old one and cut out paper dolls and uh, played a lot of paper dolls. And we'd take thing, I'd take things off of the dresser, uh, little boxes or make whatever, and, and put it out on the bed and make little rooms. You know, I'd have a little kitchen or play like kitchen and a little bit, but it was all just stuff that I gathered up from the dressers or wherever. It wasn't real play furniture. Right. <laughs> Oh yeah, yeah. Tell me, tell me we played dress up quite a bit. Uh, I don't even know what clothes. I guess we just got Mama's clothes or whatever clothes that were around. But we would put up, put on fancy clothes and clomp around in high heels and I guess do the makeup bit. We always thought we had to be fancy and pretty. <laughs> of course, we didn't have television then, so. Uh, we probably would reenact whatever movie we had seen that week. On Saturdays, we got to go to town and go to the movie. Well, it was active, uh, much more so than currently, uh, but it was a place where people came, I think, from the country. It was normal for people to come in on, to town on Saturday, uh, probably did their grocery shopping or, or whatever. And uh, it was the time when we kids got to go to the movie, which was the big thing. And I think Mama would, uh, she'd just visit with people. They'd park their cars and, and just go from one car to the next and sit and talk and, because we didn't have a telephone. So that was the time that you visited and chatted with people. Of course, we always went to church on Sunday, and that was also an opportunity to visit with other people. So, uh, not really. Uh, we, I, I still, we like I say, we went to the movies usually with one of couple or so of the other sisters or brothers or sisters mainly. Um, later, as we got into high school, uh, I would see some of the friends, but by that time, a lot, a lot of times our friends, I had friends that would come, drive out the country and come get me, <laughs> which was a good thing. <laughs> oh, well, a lot of times you didn't know in advance, but uh, a lot of times we'd sit on the front porch on those wings there by the steps and look to the hill that came down the hill, and when a car was coming, well, you'd watch to see if it came across the cattle guard. And uh, some, some of my friends that 
I had their license and whatever during high school would come out and get me. And then we'd run around and play, and I'd spend the night usually in town with them when they made the trip to come get me. And, of course, if we were expecting, hopefully, somebody to come ask you for a date, well, then they had to do, they had to make that drive twice. Once to come ask you for the date, and then to come back and pick you up. So, you know, you had to, good thing gas was cheap back then. <laughs> Put in a lot of effort if they wanted to. Right. If, if they wanted a Watson girl, well, they had to make two trips. <laughs> uh, well, basically, it was a dairy. Uh, Dad had a number of milk cows and would uh, uh, milk the cows and then put them in the big cans, uh, big old. Well, I don't know what the size, five gallon or more, I don't know, big cans. And, uh, and then take them into town. Uh, he had a big old cooler he kept them in uh, until he was ready to take them to town. Uh, occasionally, we girls, if depending on whether Dad felt bad or whether he had a hard hand or not, but there were a few times that we got to come and help clean out the barn after he'd finished milking. Uh, don't know any of us were real eager to do that, but we got that job. <laughs> but, oh, well, they were probably more older than me. Um, I think David was, I can remember David was still home. And of course, then there was Grace and Ruth and Marguerite and Collier were younger than I. So there were about seven kids of us there at home. I think at that time Vita and Patty had already uh, gone on to college. They both went to college and uh, then working or whatever, so, or married, whatever. So basically there were seven of us most of the time. Now among all those kids, did you have a nickname? Well, I was the boss. <laughs> I'm still the boss. <laughs> Girl decide that she's the boss. Oh my. Well, I'm not real sure I know just exactly how it originated. I just know from hearing them tell stories so that that was the way I answered that I was Tana Hotsis and I was the boss. And I don't know, I think, I really kind of think an aunt sort of stuck that on me. I think Aunt Ruby Ray may have been the first one to call me the boss. But I'm not positive on that. <laughs> Daddy, of course, was a very hardworking man, obviously had to be. And uh, he enjoyed singing, uh, the music, the gospel singings. And that was one of the highlights was when he'd go to town to, for a singing group. Well, he'd take the whole family. And uh, it gave us another opportunity to run around, play with whatever kids were there while the adults were in there enjoying the gospel music. So we kids didn't hang around inside very much. <laughs> Out playing. We do a lot of playing uh, hide and seek or whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, tell me something about Mamma. Oh, well, she was a hardworking lady. She had to be with all those kids. Uh, Mama had a good sense of humor. Um, she just was busy a lot with house and children and groceries and ironing and, you know, all that. She was a hard-working lady, but she did have a really good sense of humor. <laughs> oh, I really don't remember that that much. I, I really think that they were basically had left home and and I didn't really remember. I know I guess I thought I remember Patty was always very pretty with her blonde hair and, and dressed up and and of course Vita was she was the teacher. <laughs> she was had had gone on to college and she taught school for a number of years. So she was kind of a so I looked at her as being the teacher. <laughs> well let's see. I uh, was thinking about Christmas, and I may have already made this statement, that basically our, our, the main gifts that I can remember 
receiving was a new doll and sometimes a uh, some paper dolls. Although a lot of times we did cut our paper dolls out of the old catalogs. And usually got a new, a new pair of pajamas for Christmas. A, a doll in pajamas. That was kind of standard gift. But, and, uh, and of course then when we had a birthday, well we had a birthday cake. Uh, I don't remember necessarily a gift, but we probably got something. Probably paper dolls or something that wasn't real expensive. Um, but we liked to, I liked to play with paper dolls. I, I did, I remember I spent a lot of time uh, just doing play like with my paper dolls. Oh, I can remember occasionally, I guess when one of the older sisters came home or something, then I'd have to sleep with David. And he didn't like that at all. But anyway, and probably because I probably wet the bed. But. <laughs> But anyway, David didn't like it when he had to share his bed. <laughs> which, which, which room did you live in in the house? Oh, well, was, was it was... Kind of uh, a hierarchy? Or a... Yeah, you started out in the back bedroom, which always had two double beds in it. And, uh, and for occasionally we would have a day bed in the hall also. And then David's room was the middle bedroom. And then the older girls... As they got older, well, they got the front bedroom. So, did you spend any time in the front bedroom? A little bit, yeah. We slowly graduated up as they left home. Well, you vacate, then vacated their stuff. Well, then you got to move up. <laughs> Swoop right in there. Right, all right. <laughs> oh goodness. Uh, and of course, David was always pestering us. Uh, when we were doing dishes, of course he had to help with the farm work and whatever, so he was a boy, he didn't have to help with housework. But anyway, he would come in there and pester us with his, and popping us with those cup towels and making us holler. So, <laughs> he, I remember that, but. Uh, he was a pretty tough big brother, huh? Oh yeah, well, he didn't like it when he had to share his bed with little sister. Uh, but uh, actually, you know, doing dishes was almost a fun thing to do because the girls would get in there and we'd turn on the radio and we'd sing and I guess we harmonized to some extent, but it, it was, you didn't feel like you were working. You were just in there doing dishes, what you had to do and, and listening and playing the music and so forth. So it was fun to do that. Uh, and like I say, David would come in pop us with the wet towel, the wet t cup towel. Yeah, 1974, oh no, 74 was when at the farmhouse. Uh, so I think we started going in the early 1950s to the Lampasas reunion. Had to get my thoughts together there. Because I was still in like junior high. I can remember, uh, I was still in high, and then in high school. And, uh, of course, at the reunion in Lampasas, that was next, very close to where they had the uh, Air Force Base or Army Base or something. And that really cold swimming pool, it was just icy water, but, those, but the servicemen were there. So when I was in high school, well, that's where I wanted to stay, at the swimming pool, <laughs> talking to the good-looking guys and uh, I remember one time I came back from reunion and my back probably was close to a third degree burn. <laughs> I was so sunburned. It was horrible. <laughs> but we, as a teenager, well, you know, I remember we stayed at the pool about as much as anything rather than stay out there talking to the older folks. Yeah, it's good. I think that we, uh, we all learn to enjoy each other uh, one way or another and uh, accept one another and I think it's great that it continues on to the next generation so and what I guess we're looking at four to five generations now counting y'all the 
grandkids and great grandkids. Well, they're coming right on along. And uh, I think it's great that the family still gets together. Of course, the early reunions at Lampasas had aunts and uncles and cousins and whatever. And, but I think it's wonderful that at least the family gets together. And of course, occasionally a cousin or somebody will sh pop up or show up too. But I think it's good that we do that and continue uh, building that chain. Um, I, don't, I don't expect it to last forever. Uh, but uh, hopefully as long as the great eight are still around and, and hopefully their kids and, you know, it may be another couple of generations before it dies out. But uh, it'll be hard after everybody, after the great eight. <laughs> right. Well, I really don't, any memory I have of it is from hearing stories. But evidently, uh, they, you know, we had gone to the movie. That was the highlight of the week was to get to go to the movie on Saturday. And evidently it was a really good one and because they didn't even miss me. And I just got up and walked out. I, I don't know. I think, I think I was three or four years old. I wasn't very old. But I was wandering around town, uh, you know, and somebody, as the story goes, someone recognized that I was one of the Watson girls and uh, took me to the car where Mama was visiting with the ladies in town. And of course, Mama took me back to the theater and I guess Grace and Ruth caught it pretty bad <laughs> that they had let me wander off. But uh, because, and as the story goes, it was um, an election weekend. So it was, uh, or an election day. And so there were a lot of people in town to vote, so evidently it was a little crowded and full of cars and whatever, but you know, I just got up and walked out of the movie and I guess they caught it. <laughs> you know, you, could, you didn't wear pants back then, you always wore a dress everywhere you went. So I think from then on, they, I had to sit in the middle and they'd grab hold of the corner of my skirt so that they'd know if I was moving. <laughs> But as I remember the story goes, it was an election day kind of thing, and there were a lot of people in town. And uh, I don't know if the woman took me to Mama. It seems like the story goes that she took me up to where the election things were being held, and they asked my name, and I told them I was Tarana Hotsis. And, of course, nobody could understand that, but someone recognized who I was. <laughs> Yeah, they didn't know that name, Hotsis. Didn't, <laughs> didn't ring a bell. <laughs> As I was a little older, a lot of times when it was time to do dishes, well, Ruth and Marguerite, they were the piano players. So they knew they could disappear and play the piano. And, I, you know, there I was, left to wash and dry dishes. But anyway... They won't agree with me on that, but I think they used to play on the piano as an excuse to get out of washing dishes. <laughs> uh, but uh, anyway, Daddy, uh, Daddy, I think was really glad that Ruth played the piano and assist and and uh, would play at the singings or at the Sunday school class or something. But I never did have any musical talent except in my feet, and that's because I like to dance. And, of course, then one day, you know, they wanted to know how to do the bop, so I was showing up how to do the bop, and I think at one point they wanted to know how to do the dirty bop. Well, I was proceeded to do that, and Mama says, you better not ever do that in public. <laughs> Dirty bop was not the thing to do in front of your parents. <laughs> so, but anyway, uh, you know, I was always dancing around. Uh, I liked to dance a lot. And uh, I graduated in uh, 57, I think that's right. And uh, we, we, there wasn't any hope of going to college. Financially, that just was out of the question. 
So I do remember uh, this uh, salesman. Um, I think he actually got names from the school of students that might be interested in some other education that couldn't afford to go to college. But anyway, he was just a salesman, showed up at the house one day, and he was uh, representing the Southern College of Commerce in Fort Worth, Texas. And so he told Mama what all they would do and, and what it would be and so forth. And so uh, she agreed. She signed a contract for me to go to this Southern College of Commerce business school in Fort Worth. And the arrangement was that uh, they would find a family for you to live with. So I didn't have to have any expenses for my room and board. And so I do recall uh, getting on that bus, coming to Fort Worth. Uh, I was to call the school when I got there. And I had no idea how to work a pay telephone. I sat there and had to read the directions to work this pay telephone. <laughs> so anyway, uh, you look back and you really wonder how dumb I could be. But, <laughs> uh, but anyway, called the school, told them I was there, and so they instructed me to get a taxi cab and give them this, the address, and so I did. And uh, taxi cab let me off and it wasn't in the best part of, Fort, of downtown Fort Worth, but it was downtown, 2nd and Commerce Street. And it was a little bitty uh, stairway off of the street, the sidewalk that you had to go up. Well, there I was with three suitcases and the cab driver let me off and I paid him and I just stacked my suitcases right there at the stairway and went on upstairs and went into the main office and met the gentleman and, and uh, was going to talk to him and talk to him for probably 10 or 15 minutes. And he asked, well, well, where is your luggage? Do you have any luggage? And I said, yeah, it's down there at the bottom of the stairs. Oh, he got this panic-looking, stricken face. I, he bolted out of that office and raced downstairs and it came, you know, lugging all my luggage up. You know, it had never occurred to me that someone might have stolen my luggage. It just what it just didn't cross my mind at all. Uh, but anyway, that just shows how naive you are. <laughs> it's when you, when you hit the big city. Right. So um, I did have my, my higher education it was a few months at this business college. And um, I think, let's see. I looked it up. In fact, I still have the contract that Mama signed. Wow. My higher education cost $550 <laughs> total. <laughs> and, uh, and I did live with uh, different families. Uh, first family I lived with, uh, the lady was, worked as a waitress and she worked at night at a cafe. So I was at home with the husband and two sons, and I had to sleep on the sofa couch bed in the living room. So that was rather interesting. But they also raised German Shepherd dogs, and uh, that was okay as long as the family member was there. But one day I came home, and uh, no one was home, and I unlocked the door, and the German Shepherd jumped at me. If I hadn't slammed the door, I don't know what had happened. So anyway, they found another home for me to live with. <laughs> so, and it was much more calm. It was an elderly lady, and that, well, it was fine. I could sit in there and watch television with her and didn't have to worry about dogs jumping at you. <laughs> but, uh, and they did give me a, once I finished school, well, they did give me, got a good position for me with a uh, petroleum engineer company, and I was typist and receptionist and whatever.